I'm almost at the point where I'm ready to do a uh, house tour like somebody suggested to me. I, I've had that suggestion a couple times in the past. I've had that suggestion now, so... Uh, other than that, I do want to say today hasn't really been a proactive day. I'm still trying to get into, uh, I stopped for vlogging for, you know, I, I stopped trying to release a video every day. Ah. Ah, <laughs> acid reflux, acid reflux burp. Yeah, yeah. Um, stop vibrating your phone. Anyway. I stopped trying to vlog and release a decent li length video every day. Switched to uh, doing three multi-day videos a week for a week or two. And then uh, stopped vlogging for two days. And now I'm trying to get back into uh, doing the daily vlogs again. Um... So, let me know what style of video you like, whether the one, whether you want the one video a day or a video from Monday and Tuesday's vlog, mon video for Wednesday, Thursday, and a video for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, I do want to hear from you guys. Uh, I wound up getting, um... On that free card thing. Um, uh, just a second. I'll be right back. For you it'll be almost nothing. But I'll be right back. I got a pack of War of the Spark magic cards. And I'm going to go through what I got. Going from commons to uncommons to rares to um, lands and tokens. The kind of the way it's set up in the uh, pack. As you can see, that's the back of the token. I'm going to start from the other side first. First card in the pack, Oncrop, um, what was it, Oncrop Invader. It is a Zombie Minotaur Warrior. Attack and defense is 2-2. Two, two. As long as it's your turn, Oncrop Invader has... First strike, you can pay one, sacrifice another creature, and on crop, invader gets two zero. So it becomes a, if you pay one and sacrifice one creature, it becomes a four two, and it becomes a six two, eight two, until the end of the turn. Ward scale crocodile, and there's what it looks like. It is, as the name suggests, a crocodile. Costs four of any color plus a green. It is a 5-3. And it is hexproof. And it says in the flavor text, which, you know, doesn't affect the game. But it's still, you know, interesting to have in the card. It says, uh, the Eternals had to endure Amonkhet's five trials. Let's see if they can pass the trial of Ravnica. And that is a quote from Jace Balerin. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. And then we have Dusk Mantle Operative. It is a uh, two mana cost, one black plus one of any color. Human Rogue, attack and defense are 2-2. Two, two. And it cannot be blocked by creatures with power 4 or greater. And the flavor text on it says, Gideon eyed the Demir Emissary warily. 
Could your agents slip inside Bolas's citadel? The figure met his gaze with icy resolve. We already have. Ah, I lost the guard. And then we have the Wall of Runes. Here's what it looks like. It is a one mana cost zero four wall. Cannot attack. It has defender, so it cannot attack. And when it enters the battlefield, scry one. Which means you look at the top card. Or, you know, when it says scry and then whatever number, you look at that many cards and decide how many go on the top and how many go on the bottom of your deck out of how many you looked at. Then we have the, uh, Wallet Bullet. Wallet Bullet. No, it's the, uh, Iron Bully. Three mana cost Golem. It's an artifact creature, so it counts as an artifact and a creature. Uh, it is a 1-1 one -one with Menace. And when it enters the battlefield, any creature that's on the battlefield uh, already, including Iron Bully, one of those creatures gets a 1-1 one -one counter, so it becomes stronger by one attack and one defense. And we have Arlen's Wolf. And I've got something that kind of goes with this, just by the namesake. Uh, you'll see what it is. Uh, I got it in this same pack here. Uh, Arlen's Wolf is a 3 mana cost, 1 green plus 2 of any color. 3, 2 attack and defense. Oh, so it's attack 3, defense 2. Wolf. Arlen's Wolf cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Flavor text says, if you don't speak wolf, allow me to translate one step closer and I will rip your throat out. And that is a uh, quote from Arlen Cord. Then we have Callous Dismissal. It is a sorcery. Uh, return target non-land permanent. So it can be a creature, um, artifact, or enchantment. Back to its owner's hand. And then you get to a mass one, which will lead right into the token, so I'll just show you the token now. Either you put a plus one, plus one counter on one of these army creatures that you control, or you create one, and you put one, on, uh, one, one counter on it. That is that card. That card either create creates or strengthens one of these after you put a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and the flavor text says they make it clear we are nothing to them come on you damn phone I get it you vibrate you're a vibrator uh, anyway um, the flavor text says it's a quote from Lavinia they make it clear we are nothing to them. Then we have Crush Descent. It is an instant. So it can be played um, in response to something on any player's turn. Counter target spell. Unless its controller pays two extra mana or land. And then you amass two. So it's basically the same as the last card. Except either you create one of these. Or you have one of these on the field already. And you put 
two plus one plus one counters on it instead of just one. And then there is the Bulwark Giant. It is a six mana cost. Three six. You can summon for one white or planes, basically, or anything with that sun symbol. And then five extra. When Bulwark Giant enters the battlefield, you gain five life. Flavor text, where did she come from? More importantly, are there more like her? And that is a quote from Gideon Jura, one of the Planeswalkers. We have Teferi's Time Twist. Two mana, one blue, one of any color. Instant. Exile target permanent you control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. If it entered as a creature, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So, looking at the Teferi's Time Twist with that last card, you could play the Bulwark Giant that I mentioned and then play Teferi's Time Twist and you would gain 10 life. And then there's a quote, it does not say from who, but the flavor text is a quote. The safest place for you is not now. <laughs> then there is the Elite Guild Mage it is a four mana cost, one blue, one white. Um, human wizard. Power and toughness is two and three, respectively. With flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life and draw a card. Again, you, if you use the Teferi's Time Twist with the Elite Guild Mage that uh, enter the battlefield effect happens twice. And then a quote from Lavinia as she is talking to Chandra Nalar. Lavinia says, Be careful. You'll have more than Dovin to contend with if you hope to breach new Prav. And... Looks like that is the first uncommon in the pack. Out of, looks like, three uncommons. Second uncommon is Death Sprout. One green mana, one, or two black mana, and one of any color. It is an instant. Um, you can destroy target creature. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield taps, then shuffle your library. Well, sounds like a blue green or a black green card to me. And going back earlier into the video, I had Arwen's Wolf. Now we have the Planeswalker. Arlen, Voice of the Pack. It is a six mana planeswalker with seven loyalty. It enters with seven loyalty counters on it, which is basically just a way to keep track of, yeah, basically how strong it is. It's basically like the power and toughness for creatures, but it, the seven is represented down there. It shows how strong it is. It is a legendary Planeswalker, so you can only have one Arlen Voice of the Pack on the field. But if you have another Arlen on the field, this one does not get destroyed. Um, the, static, uh, play, 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 play. the static effect of this card is each creature you control 
that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So if it's a power 2, toughness 1, then it becomes a 3-2. And you can subtract two loyalty counters from it to create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. And then we have the rare card. Bolus's Citadel. It is an artifact that costs three swamps or three black mana and three of any color. It is a legendary artifact, so you can only have one on the field. And it says you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its uh, converted mana cost, which is that three black plus three of any color. You, If you cast, like, let's say you were able to cast another one of these, you would pay six life and tap the mana. Or no. It says y you may pay either the mana cost or six life or, you know, with this, it would be six. With that one, it would be six because that's the mana. With this one, you would it would be four, so you could pay four mana or four life. Uh, it gets confusing, so it's one of those things where you have to keep on top of everything. Um, so you can look at um, um, you can look at the top card of your library which is the deck of cards. You can play the top card of your library, and if you play the top card of your library, you may choose to pay the mana cost or pay an amount of life equal to the mana cost. And then you can tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to have each opponent lose 10 life. I've already got a possibility, or two possibilities, for how to use this card. All set up. One of them is a, it's a combo that I have in a deck that I already have. Uh, another one is a deck that I am currently wanting to make. Um, I'll be right back. Alright, so anyway, the last card that I haven't shown you is a Swamp. Picture here, on the top part of the card, varies from Swamp to Swamp, but all Swamps produce one black mana. And then the very last card is one that was associated with two cards in the pack. It is a zombie army. It starts out as a zero zero zombie army token. And it gets stronger as you put one one counters on it. And there's two ways you can do that that I know of. Either by the amass mechanic or by proliferate. I guess there's another effect that uh, just adds plus one, plus one counters onto a creature, but... Anyway. Bye.